I'm just going to take the scripture. Let's read the scripture. How many of you love the Holy Bible? How many of you, you love the Holy Bible? It's the Word of God, you know? It's not the Word of man. It's all God breathed. Paul writes to Timothy and says, all scripture is God breathed. Yeah, smoky. And the word in the Greek, the Greek, is theopneustos. Theo meaning God, pneustos, pneuma, from which we get pneumonia, pneumatic. God breathed. So all scripture in the Old and New Testaments of the Bible is God breathed. It's not by man's interpretation, it's by the Holy Spirit's understanding that we understand the Word of God. So you don't need the succession of the Roman Church or the Anglican Church or any other church because the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Are you not part of a church then? I, we, we have a group, a little assembly who meet together. But we're just a handful of people. Are you a pastor? I do pastor the church, yeah. But well, that so means you're, you're that means I'm servant to the church. You're, you're ordained. I'm ordained by the Lord. Yeah. The, the, the Lord said to his disciples, Jesus said to his disciples, You have not chosen me. This is in John chapter 15. He says, He says this. In in John chapter 15 and verse 16. Jesus said, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. So Jesus said, I have chosen you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. So the disciples were actually ordained by Jesus Christ. So ordination comes from Christ. You have to be ordained by Christ. You can, if you're ordained in a seminary or a Bible college, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're ordained by Christ. But it has to be Christ who ordains people and sends them. So the word apostle means send. And Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, or apostled me, even so have I sent you. And so the apostles were sent to do the work of God. And we are sent to preach the word of God. And that's why the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Not from one church system to another, not through the Protestant line or the Roman Catholic line, or any other line. But uh, Paul writes to the Romans and he says this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with this. The Apostle Paul said, so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. And so the Apostle Paul here says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now why is Paul not ashamed? Why is the Apostle Paul not ashamed of the gospel? Because the gospel or the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ, the gospel which concerns the death of Jesus Christ for our sins and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, the gospel is that good news. Salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
And that means that salvation, or you being saved from sin, is not because of your good works. As Paul again writes to Titus, he says, it is not by works of righteousness, but by the mercy of God that he saved us. Not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. And so where do we see the mercy of God? In Jesus Christ. That's where you'll find mercy, in Jesus Christ. You won't find mercy anywhere else, but only by the propitiatory work of Jesus Christ, by the substitutionary death that he suffered in the place of sinners by going to the cross of Calvary. So when the Apostle Paul says he is not ashamed of the gospel, it is because his whole life was in the gospel. The Apostle Paul was not living. Hello, John. Hello. The Apostle Paul was not living for himself anymore. He was living for Christ. And the Apostle Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. There was nothing that any devil could hold back from the Apostle Paul. He was completely committed unto Jesus Christ. And that's why nothing could separate the Apostle Paul from the love of Christ. He said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor any other creature, nor life nor death can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And at the beginning of this year, we should all remember the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has made for sin. And with the Apostle Paul, I hope some of you here today, including this brother and Flash, I hope some of you here today can also say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Because it is the power of God. Yeah. You say, where do you find the power of God? In healings and miracles and all these other goings on. The greatest power of God is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the gospel has the power to save the sinner. However great your sin might be, or however few sins you may have committed, you all have a sinful nature from Adam, our first father. Every one of us has a nature of sin, even if you never sin. If the dog never barks, it's still a dog. It's not the bark that makes it a dog. It's not the sin that makes you a sinner. It's the nature that is in every human being that makes them sinful. And the Roman Catholics will tell you that being baptized as a baby takes away original sin. No, it doesn't. Original sin is not taken away by infant baptism. That's a false teaching called baptismal regeneration. Yeah. But you have to be baptized as a believer. The Ethiopian who went back to Ethiopia with the gospel, he wanted to be baptized. And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may be baptized. Mm. And the Ethiopian said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And they went down, both of them, into the water and he was baptized. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Otherwise, you cannot be saved. If you have been lied to from birth and you've been told God has no son, it's a lie. Have you ever asked yourself the question, perhaps I need to examine whether I've been lied to? Because it's a lie. And that's why the Apostle Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation is being saved from sin. And that's what Jesus Christ came to do. If you could have saved yourself, 
If I could have saved myself, then there would have been no need for Jesus Christ to come. If we could reach God by our works, by our fasting, by our gift to charity, by our pilgrimages, if these things could reach God, then there would have been no need for Jesus Christ to come. If we could save ourselves by our good works, then we would bring God down to our level. But we can't save ourselves by our good works. And that is why it was necessary for Jesus Christ to come into the world, because in Adam, all of us are sinners. In Adam, we have a sinful nature, every one of us. And that sinful nature needs to be atoned for. And that's why Adam failed. He failed to give to God a perfect obedience, a perfect righteousness. And that's why in Adam, we're all dead in sin. And that is why Jesus Christ came to do what Adam failed to do as man. He had to become man to obey God perfectly as man. Even though he was the eternal word of God, the eternal son of God, he still had to become man in order to, as man, reverse what Adam had done in losing salvation by sinning against God. And so Jesus Christ came to perfect this human nature. And that's what he did. He was without sin. There was no sin in him. That's why he is holy and harmless and undefiled and separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens. And the reason why he came into the world was to obey God where Adam had disobeyed God. Well, Without Jesus Christ, obedience, all of us would be lost well, forever. God. But he was, but he came into the world to obey God in every detail. Jesus Christ came man. He became man so that he might show that perfect love for God. He never did a pilgrimage. Jesus Christ never did a pilgrimage to Rome or to Mecca or anywhere else. But Jesus Christ came to obey God, to love God perfectly as man and to love his neighbor as himself perfectly. Only Jesus Christ loved his neighbor as himself perfectly by raising the dead, by healing the sick, by making the blind to see and the deaf to hear and the cripples to walk. He loved his neighbor as himself. He obeyed the Ten Commandments perfectly. And that's why he came as man to love God perfectly and to love his neighbor as himself perfectly. And having done so, having obeyed God perfectly, and as man, as man, having been accepted by God because of his obedience, he was then Jesus Christ. After that, he had obeyed God perfectly. He was then willing he was then willing to pay the penalty for all those of us who have broken the holy law of God. And every one of us has broken God's moral law. Every one of us are sinners by nature. And that is why it was necessary for Jesus Christ to come into the world as man to obey God perfectly as man, that that humanity might be glorified. And having obeyed God perfectly as man, he was then willing to pay the penalty for those of us who have broken God's law. That's all of us. For those of us who are sinners, sinners by nature and sinners by practice. And Jesus Christ, by death, he paid the penalty to him that required death for sin. God said, the soul that sins, it shall die. And so Jesus Christ was willing to pay the penalty to the justice of God by suffering death. That's why he had to become man in all points like we are to put away death, to put away sin. That's why he came into the world that he might be the sin bearer. And only Jesus Christ can take away your sin. No one else can take away your sin. 
Only Jesus Christ. No, Allah, Allah can't take away your sin. You see, without death, Adam died. Why? Why did Adam die? Because of sin. So how can death be taken away by the Son of God taking on flesh, becoming man, and putting away death, swallowing up death? That's what Jesus Christ came to do, to swallow up death. He had to go through the experience of death to swallow it up and rise from the dead on the third day. Can God be that created? Is why God in Christ. God was in Christ reconciling the world okay, unto himself. And he has given to us the ministry Can of God reconciliation. Be and as the Apostle Paul said, I am not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Answer my question. Can Lord God Jesus be created? Christ. Because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will know that the penalty for your sin has been paid in full. Because when Jesus Christ was on the cross of Calvary, he cried, it is finished. He had done all the work necessary for man's salvation. And when he cried, it is finished in the Holy of Holies, in the temple, in the Jewish temple. The temple curtain was torn from the top to the bottom. And that was in the Holy of Holies, the holy place in the temple where the high priest used to go every year with the blood of the sacrifice. So at least you pray but Jesus like Christ, Jesus, you, why don't Jesus you pray Christ like Jesus? has not entered into the places why don't made you with hands, Jesus, then? which are the figures like of the him. true. But Jesus Christ has entered into heaven Let itself. Pray like this. Now to appear with his own blood, his own blood is redeeming. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin because there's power in the blood of Jesus. And we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, and not loving our lives to the death. Jesus Christ forgave a woman's sins. She was caught in adultery. I hope you haven't committed adultery. But this woman who was caught in adultery in Saudi Arabia, they would have stoned her to death. They would have stoned her to death. But Jesus Christ said, let him that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And nobody could cast a stone. Nobody could cast a stone at her because they were all sinners. They were all sinners. They had all broken the law of God. And therefore they couldn't cast a stone. But then Jesus said, you're done. As no man condemned you. She said, no man, sir. He said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. So Jesus Christ forgave that woman's sins. That shows he is God. Because only God can forgive sin. And that is why Jesus Christ came into the world to die the death that we should have died. When Jesus Christ died that death on the cross, he was bearing all the righteous anger of a holy God against sin. And he was willing to do that out of love for sinners like you and I. He was willing to go into the place of punishment, the place of execution. Jesus Christ was willing to suffer in the place of his beloved children, that they might be saved. Uh, eternally saved. Not saved by their works, not saved by their feelings, but saved by the finished work of Jesus Christ. And that is why you need faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You can't please God without faith. Faith is a principal grace. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Jesus Christ is a faithful and true witness the first begotten of the dead, and he came to give life to all those who would truly repent of their sin, all those who have a broken spirit and a contrite heart, all those who are truly sorry and want to live a new life and know that they haven't got the power to overcome sin by their own righteousness, by their own ability. They need the spirit of Christ. That's alone what overcame sin. Because in Jesus Christ, there was no sin. 
And so when the spirit of Christ comes to dwell within the believer, the believer overcomes sin. You may have fallen prey to sin in the past. You may have been overcome by sin. But in the long run, the victory will be through Jesus Christ. Because the spirit of Christ has overcome sin. Why don't you answer all the questions? Yeah, answer. Well, you, he can't speak with the if you listen, Jesus, he can speak with listen, him. and then I'll answer your questions at the end. Listen for So in order for you to have the victory, now you don't want the victory I over sin. You don't want the victory over sin because you're mocking. You're mocking. But Jesus Christ came to pay the penalty for sin and to also overpower sin. So in Jesus Christ, by his spirit dwelling within us, we overcome sin. Yes. We, he pay, not only paid the penalty for our sin, but he's also destroyed the power of sin in the believer's life. And however strong sin is in you, ultimately, if you're born of the Holy Spirit, you will overcome the sin. Because the Holy Spirit in you will overcome the sin. What if you're not born in it? You've got to be born again. You must be born again. There's no other way. If you are not born of the Spirit of God, no. you will not even understand the Word of God. You must be born again. There must be a spiritual rebirth, a spiritual renaissance. That's what everyone needs. A renaissance and a rebirth. You must be born again. Jesus Christ said this to a religious Jew, a man who was in the Sanhedrin, the Jewish Council of Seventy. He said to him, Nicodemus, you must be born what again. What if you're not feeling it? It's not a matter of feeling. It's a matter of faith. We walk by faith, not by feelings, not by sight. It's not what you feel. It's what you believe that Can makes you what you are. Animals? What you are, Can what, he speak to what you believe is what you are. I'm if you asking believe you. That God Can has he speak to anyone? If you believe that God has no son, then you can't be saved. And that's what you are. Can he speak You're an unsaved man. Can he speak to anyone? God does speak through his holy word, the holy Bible. Then is Jesus a God? He is the God man. I was the God man. The God man. Then can God be created? He's not created. Uh, this is the point. This is the point. Jesus Christ is the eternal word of God. God cannot you, be you created. Call, you call him Kalimatullah. God is that's eternal. The Kalimatullah is eternal. It's eternal. The word of God is eternal. And Jesus Christ is the word of God. He is eternal. He's the eternal word of God. And the Ruach, the Ruach, the Holy Spirit is also eternal. He's uncreated. The breath of God, the breath, the breath, the breath of God is uncreated. And that's why the word of God, the breath of God, or the Ruach and the Father God are one God. Father, Word and Spirit, the Holy Trinity. And that's why the Jews in their Shema, when they say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The word for one so there is Echad. It's Echad. And what one Echad means a compound unity. Like one tree, lots of branches, lots of leaves, lots of twigs. That's one tree. Show but me it's something compound. that's not created. And God is one, but he's what compound. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.